So I've been a real big fan of Michael, aka Soko Joko Woodwork, and his Basket Illusion projects. I think it's time to give it a try, so let's get started. What we got to work with today is a piece of maple that's about four and a half inches square. It's a little over four and a half inches wide and it's eight inches tall. Later you're gonna see me trim it down to, to give it a little bit better proportions. As you can probably tell, that bowl gouge just wasn't doing the job. So grab my spindle get roughing gouge, and uh, you know what? It, uh, it should have been my first choice because it worked out really well. I apologize for this, but it's this isn't the best camera angle. Uh, but what I'm really doing here is just creating a tendon uh, so that when I turn it around, I've got something to mount in the chuck. Here you see me marking where I'm going to be trimming this down later. It just, you know, it was a little too long and it just needed better proportions. I had a different shape in mind when I started this, but you know, as usual, it went a different direction. Drop a comment down below and let me know, does this happen to you or is it just me? Notice those beads at the top of this? 
That was me practicing. That, as you'll see soon, <laughs> that practice didn't help me that much. This steady rest really came in handy. I'll put a link up above of me making it. Go check it out if you'd like to make one for yourself. I learned my lesson here. This was way too big of a beating tool. Thankfully they had enough wall thickness to fix this mistake. This was a much better beading tool, but still not perfect. I did end up purchasing some different ones. I'll put links to those down in the description.
I'm using the wire burning tool that I made a few videos ago. I'll put a link to it uh, up above. To get a really good burn, you need to crank up that lathe speed. I had this one going about 1200 RPMs. I recently picked up this pen burning tool just for this project. I'll put links to it down in the description. I hobbled together this quick and dirty pen rest uh, and pen holder. I didn't put much detail about it in here because it's really not a permanent solution. But you know, make sure that you subscribe so that you know you don't see future videos when I make this a little bit better. This really wasn't too bad. It, to do the whole thing, it really only took me about 30 minutes uh, to burn in all the spokes. Whenever you're making a bowl, hollow form, or anything like that, you always want it to sit really on the edges. So here I'm taking off the tenon and I'm making the bottom concave to, to get that effect. These are the pins that I'm going to be using on the project today. I'll put links to all of these down in the description. I used some graph paper to sketch out my design. I thought it would be really simple, but it was kind of difficult. The challenge is, is that you have to make sure that your repeating pattern doesn't end up in the middle when you reach right around to the beginning of it. And so that was just a little bit challenging to, to map out. To make this easier and to ensure that I don't mess it up, rather than coloring in the full um, spot, I'm just going in with the fine tip and just making a dot line, something, and then I'll come back later and fill it in. And it just makes sure that I stay consistent and I don't color the wrong thing. 
if you do, you can use like an X-Acto blade or something like a hobby knife or something and just scrape the wood. Trust me, I didn't show it on camera, but I did have to scrape a few lines. I apologize about the bad camera angle here. My hand is in the way most of the time, but here in just a, a minute, you'll see a little bit clearer of how I'm coloring them in. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what it takes to color these in. You just take your time. Uh, I use the two different pens, uh, the brush pen for the bulk and then the fine tip pen as you see here to get really down in the cracks. Uh, but you know, it, it wasn't that bad. But now I'm going to move inside where it's a little nicer and more comfortable, sit in my recliner and, and do the rest off camera. Based on the recommendation of uh, Silco Joko Woodwork, I'm going to seal this in with some UV archival spray. Uh, it's usually typical for art pieces. So does that mean I can call this a work of art? I don't know. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider hitting that like button. If you want to see future videos, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.